So in this segment, we're going to be talking about um, British businesses setting up subsidiaries and also um, moving investment into the EU to avoid things like um, customs and VAT charges, um, as well as um, the problems exporting, um, as well as the, the haulage problem with moving UK products um, into France. So um, we've got there's a lot to talk about in this um, in this video. But um, before that, I just want to say, just like and subscribe for, you know, news content. Also, we're going to be digging through this guy's article where he blames Angela Merkel for um, Brexit, essentially. So we're going to be talking about that. So um, subscribe for that and um, eventually we'll get there. And so um, this this is great work from Lisa O'Carroll um, of The Guardian, where she's, you know, specifically talked to um, this person here, a Cheshire, a Cheshire cheese maker. He says his business um, left with £250,000 black hole and will have to move a £1 million investment he planned for Macclesfield to France. I'll be creating French jobs, paying into the EU tax system, which he says was hardly the point of Brexit. Now, apparently, this guy did not vote for Brexit, but um, he voted Remain, but had to come to accept Brexit and he had been planning for it and getting on with future planning and expansion, which is what the government wanted him to do. So there's a couple of interesting points to talk about in this whole thing, which is we'll talk about this this guy specifically, and then we'll talk about um, companies moving to the EU more uh, broadly. Um, so Simon Sorrell says his firm lost 20% of sales and will switch a £1 million investment to France. 20% is a lot of money for a business to lose. 20% of sales, sorry, is a lot of money to lose. So a commercial cheesemaker in Cheshire has been left with um, the £250,000 Brexit hole in his business. I don't know what support he's getting from the British government. It doesn't look like he's getting much. Um, Simon Spurrell said he lost 20% of his sales overnight after discovering he needed to provide a £180 health certificate on retail orders to consumers in the EU, EU including those buying personal gift packets, packs of his award-winning wax wrapped cheese worth £25 or £30. So I don't know who buys someone else cheese. It's a bit weird, but you know, when I went to um, Amsterdam, there's some good cheese and oh my god, it was some, it was some good stuff. Um, he says he had hoped to take part in the sunny uplands promised by the government post-Brexit, but has instead seen the viability of his online retail um, come to a stop. The only thing is, um, does he have to pay a £100 certificate even for a £30 um, like like sort of gift wrap bit of cheese? Because that's, that's insane if he does. Um, our business had high hopes of continued growth in the EU market after seeing the avoidance of the no deal and announcement of a free trade deal. Um, what has only become clear in the last week is that our successful B2C business to customer um, online sales uh, to EU customers has now um, is now impossible to operate. To save his business, he will now have to switch a £1 million investment he was planning to make in a new distribution centre in Macclesfield to the EU with the loss of 20 jobs and tax revenue in the UK. And it's not just the loss of these 20 jobs, it's also the construction and you know architects and whatever else you would need to set up you know this kind of factory within um say macclesfield in this case it's all moving to france so this will create more than just 20 jobs short term it'll create quite a few more jobs because you've got to do all the construction and things like that um you know it's money going to you know potentially french farmers in order to get the milk that they need because they're not going to get it from the uk because it's going to take too long and it's going to also cost them more anyways because things like health checks will have to happen so most likely this guy's going to buy from a french or a german or you know whatever else you know farmer um for the milk and then make the cheese from there so you know it's a it's, it's a move this person has to make a cost of 20 jobs and I, i'd assume a decent amount of tax revenue for um, hmrc or aka the tax man it's a real shame because that means i'm going to now invest in france provide french employment and then contribute to the eu tax system which was pretty much going against the whole reason we were meant to be leaving i just want to stress again that this person says he voted for remain and you know i've got no reason to disbelieve him but i guess he's pointing out the fact that brexit was all about these things and we've done the exact opposite as small businesses up and down the country um, come to terms with the new and complex export red tape, Sparrow explained that he thought he was fully prepared for Brexit and had consulted with the Department for Environment, uh, DEFRA, and uh, the National Farmers Union. Along the way, the thing was, these people didn't know what the rules would be. The only thing these people knew were if in a no-deal scenario, you'd have to be doing customs checks, all those kind of health checks and all that stuff, and be um, have quotas and tariffs to deal with in the event of a no-deal. It wouldn't be quotas, it might be just tariffs to deal with. Um, in the event of a no deal. That's the only thing DEFRA could have told him um, because DEFRA did not know the specifics of the deal before the deal happened. We also know that, you know, the fishing um, minister was off 
um, on some nativity thing when the deal was signed. So these people did not know the specifics of the deal that was signed. Um, so going back to the article, he knew he he would need customs declarations and health certificates signed uh, off by vets to get his cheese into the EU after the 1st of January and has successfully been getting pallets of products across the channel to wholesale customers. Um, but what he did not anticipate was the requirement of health certificates to accompany online orders from, pri from private customers. It's as if, so I guess, sorry, I guess he does have to pay that £180 per block of cheese exported by the looks of things. I'm sure Dano could correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, and I'd appreciate that. So, um, you know, tomorrow or whenever you see the video, check the comments to see if he's put anything down there because he's our kind of EU expert, um, I suppose. Um, it's as if someone forgot to negotiate this part of the deal. They forgot that there needed to be some sort of exemption or allowance for direct consumer sales. They, were, they didn't forget this thing, mate. This was the design of the deal. He wanted to spin it as a no quote, a no tariff deal, but he forgot about these things. So, um, you know, this, this business owner says, we ship to the USA, Canada, Norway, etc., all non-EU countries. We have never had a problem with um, with at all. It's an oversight in the agreement that does not affect EU producers at all, but it's a, a, it's a dead stop for UK producers selling into the EU. And here the EU kind of has, not a comp has a competitive advantage because EU sales um, into the UK because there's no customs checks or they're going to be reduced amounts of custom checks, and I don't think there's any health certificate checks. They have a massive advantage when it comes to exporting cheese um, into the UK, because I don't think these checks are actually happening on EU products. In an indication that neither the EU or UK had time to translate the deal into uh, practical guidance for businesses, DEFRA said it was continuing to engage with the European Commission and EU member states to ensure that we had a shared common understanding of the EU's export rules and how they should apply. So DEFRA has no idea. That's what we can gather from this. DEFRA has absolutely no clue what's going on. DEFRA said it worked hard to ensure UK businesses were not disadvantaged by the deal and that Farming and Food Minister Victoria Prentice uh, would now be in contact with Sparrow and DEFRA officials to discuss further. But the thing is, you should have been doing this from before we left. This is why you don't sign last minute deals like this because it causes all sorts of problems and all of these ministers are scrambling because they have no idea what's going on. All they know is businesses have been impacted and this is you know, the hallmark of this conservative government. They are reactive and not proactive. Proactive means you deal with problems before they come up in order to be prepared. They are reactive and they are last minute reactive as well. DEFRA said it had worked with UK business, oh, which I mentioned that. It also revealed that the number of vets or food competence certifying officers now trained to issue um, health certificates had risen from 600 to 1,500, and this number continues to grow, which is good news. Um, Sabine Wayard, Way, Wayand, the Director General of Trade at the European Commission, and Michel Barnier, former deputy in the withdrawal agreement and negotiations, posted a tweet in English saying, help us to help you with a link reported to the EU Access to Markets website explaining how to report a trade barrier. Sparrow's Cheshire, uh, Cheshire Cheese Company in Macclesfield and Harrington Creamery in Derbyshire to, um, Derbyshire turnover more than 4.3 million a year and employs 25 people and he planned to double staff numbers with a new fulfillment centre in March. I'd be looking to apply another 20 people um, on top of the 25 we have now, he said. So more of a medium business than a small business, I guess. So substantial investment, which we now had to review. So, you know, the, he this person here has talked about the issues that he's had. And it makes a lot of sense, um, considering that, you know, there's a lot more red tape now than there was before. I mean, there was barely any red tape before. Um, but now there's a lot more red tape and the EU does have a competitive advantage because of the UK's failure here. And so I do feel bad for, you know, this person. Here. I do feel uh, for bad slightly for the town of Macclesfield. Um, because they've lost out on jobs and investment. But at the end of the day, you know, this is down to, you know, Bojo and, and, and the circus gang. Honestly, it is. And we go to our next article here, because this, this is part of a broader thing here, which is a move to EU, move to EU to avoid Brexit costs, firms told. So this is, apparent, according to the BBC, this is not directly from the, um, which, which department was this? Um, from the Department of International Trade, uh, DIT. Um, this is not, they haven't this is not official advice according to the bbc from dit but it seems like this is the advice from the department um for international trade so in an extraordinary twist to brexit saga uh, to the brexit saga uk small businesses are being told by advisors working for the department of international trade that the best way to circumvent border issues and vat problems that have been piling up since the 1st of january is to register new firms within the eu single market from where they can distribute their goods far more freely 
that the heads of the two UK businesses that have been beset by Brexit related problems have told the Observer, following um, advice from experts at the Department for International Trade, they have already decided to register new companies in the EU in the next few weeks. Um, they, they, they knew of many other similar problems. Other companies have also said they, they too were advised by government officials to register operations in the EU but had not made the decision yet. So, you know, this is another specific example here of a guy who's moving, um, he's setting up shop, a small part of his business in the Netherlands. Um, Moss said, Guy talked complete sense what, about um, a conversation he had with someone at the Department for International Trade. What I said to him was, have I got another choice other than to set up a company abroad? He confirmed that he could not see another way. He told me that I w what I was thinking of doing was the right thing and I could see no other option. He did not see this as a teething problem. He said um, he had to be careful what he said but he was very clear and so basically what this person has told him is there's no other way this is not a teething issue this is the new normal and that's what it seems like because customs checks and health checks and all these things are the new normal now these will not go away unless our relationship with the eu fundamentally changes and so what that means is that things may become more efficient but they're still going to have problems so if you move to the eu now you're not going to face these problems um because you're in within the single market so um Jeffrey Bates, Betts, Managing Director of Stewart Superior Limited, a company in Marlow Bucks, which sells office supplies to um, the UK and Continental uh, customers, said he had also decided to set up shop in the Netherlands for the same reasons. Also, the Netherlands is lower tax from what I've um, what I read. Um, but, you know, you can see it here, you know, yesterday, the impact of the single market and custom, a customs union on the 1st January became more clear. So, you know. The, uh, the Financial Times reported that the cost of a £12 bottle of wine in UK shops could rise by £1.50 a bottle because of the extra bureaucracy in charge. That might not sound a lot, but in the long term, it is um, a massive increase for businesses um, who have to pay the extra amount. It might not be £1.50 for them, um, but it might be, say, a pound. But that's still a massive increase if you think about it in bigger numbers. Um, in a further blow to the government's idea of a global Britain after Brexit, the chances of signing a swift UK-US deal, that was a separate video I wanted to do, also appeared to be ebbing away after President Joe Biden's nominee Janet Yellen made clear that um, the US had bigger issues. Also, the fact that we didn't actually manage to sign a deal with Trump is pretty embarrassing, considering he was one of the ones who actually helped with Brexit in terms of his rhetoric, saying that, no, join, you know, leave your friends, come join me. Um, so apparently, yeah, so this is what I was talking about a few minutes ago. So, um, let's see here. The Department of Education's uh, International Trade said this was not government policy talking about moving to the EU, but kind of is at this point, which is if you assess your options, they're going to tell you what's the best thing you can do, which is leave. Basically, set up a, a group. You're going to do trade with the EU, you know, start manufacturing stuff over there or start importing your stuff to um, a country within the EU if you're going to sell to EU based customers. Because if you bring it into the UK and send it back off to the EU, you're going to have a lot of problems. And um, yeah. If we go, uh, so now we go on to the person I've constantly been citing a lot um, over the last few months, um, and these tweets are free. So, you know, this is her uh, doctor, Anna Jelzeska, being, I think that's how you pronounce it, I hope it is. So being very um, kind of annoyed at the um, the Express here, where it says the Department for uh, International Trade is understood to have encouraged UK businesses to register new firms within the EU single market to avoid extra charges, paperwork and taxes resulting from Brexit. And this is what the uh, Express calls a genius move to move jobs and, um, you know, a VAT payments from the UK into the EU. Genius. Um, international business consultant Anna Jelzeska, you know, Dr. Anna Jelzeska to you, um, Express, said she agreed with the DIT position. And, um, you know, she said that was sarcasm. So um, she goes into detail about this, which I think this is important in this video. Hopefully this video doesn't drag on too much more. Um, so she says, some yes, it's all about what your company does, where it brings goods from, what happens to the goods in the UK and where you're, they're told... Um, where they're sold to. In some cases, you'd have to double or triple duties after bringing in goods into the UK. Rules of origin might be an issue, Percy Pigs, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then there is VAT and uh, cases where you might need a representative in the EU country and loss of triangulation. Each company thinking about setting up in the EU needs to properly analyse what that means. Cost first benefits. Setting up in the EU means extra costs. How much are you avoiding the red tape? So you're going to have costs of setting up your company, also the cost of staff, possibly translators, depending on how... Um, which country you set up in 
Um, it's not a one size fits all. Not every company should be thinking about such an option. For some, it'll be a no brainer, like the cheese people, the cheese company guy, and the other, um, and the other way to continue doing what they do, but not for others. TLDR: consider, Considering setting up business in the EU should have a good business case, one based on their own circumstances. Get advice, speak to people, think it through. But yes, for some companies, that's the way forward. And um, absolutely, she makes a lot of sense here, as always. Um, so if we talk about the Percy Pigs thing, it's to do with the rules of origin. Um, and so we talk specifically here about the Percy Pigs. So the boss of MS was using Percy Pigs as an example of a situation in which it was not clear whether the tariffs needed to be paid. And this is very confusing. The sweets are manufactured and packaged in Germany, then shipped to the UK. No tariffs are payable because of the trade deal. Then they are taken from the MS warehouse and exported um, to stores in the Republic of Ireland, which is part of the EU. Now, this is the complicated bit because they have left the EU, um, obviously coming into the UK and not been processed enough to count as being made in the UK. Um, it may be that a tariff needs to be paid to get them into the EU, despite them having been made in the EU in the first place. They had been unpacked and put on a cupcake, for example. If they had been unpacked and put on a cupcake, for example, there would be no tariff because they would have been transformed. But just storing them in the UK is not enough. It's hard to see why the situation emerged because it is obviously not in the interest. It's hard to see why this situation has emerged. It is obviously not in the interest of the UK and the EU. I mean, this is a bit of a strange throwaway line here. But, um, you know, what MS might end up doing is just moving production straight to Germany um, purely because to avoid any tariffs or anything like that. It's the simple thing to do um, in regards to these cakes. Um, so why has this happened? So Dr. Um, Anna Jawazeska, founder of the Trade and Borders Consultancy, said this is a wonderful example of why you want longer to negotiate a deal. She added what, that while this is a standard provision for a trade deal, normally countries negotiating such an agreement will not have such closely integrated supply chains. She's talking about rules of origin. Um, so the government spokesperson said rules of origin are standard feature in trade deal, blah, blah, blah. Who cares what the government says because they're full of frauds. And so... The rules of origin make sure that a company in the UK can't buy cheap products from a country with poor labour standards, e.g. China, India, change the labels on them and sell them into the EU tariff free. That may sound simple, but according to the boss of Marks and Spencers, it really isn't. And we've talked about Percy's Pig. So just to recap quickly, um, UK businesses moving um, or setting up subsidiaries um, into the EU to avoid things like customs and VAT, um, uh, VAT, because um, you need... Um, a VAT account with the country you're dealing with, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the case. Pretty sure. Um, but yeah, you know, you can see companies moving into the EU to avoid things like um, the health checks and all that stuff. And instead, they're moving manufacturing to the EU. And so I reckon what they're going to do is anything, if they sell a decent amount of products to the EU, they'll set up manufacturing within the EU in order to avoid things like customs and, um, you know, the kind of blockade, the um, blockade in Dover as well that'd be a smart move um i hope this video makes sense i hope everything here made sense i'm not 100 sure uh let me know what you think in the comments below like comment share subscribe and hopefully i'll see you in the next one